Okay, so when we open up Axis, um, we we have to create the the blank database straight away. Okay, now depending on which version of Axis that you have, um, they all kind of do the same thing. But you need to click blank database, and then you need to call it something. So I'm going to call mine, you know, mail order database. Okay, and I'm going to click on create. Now. In Access, okay, this is what it looks like. Okay, you have your um, you know, buttons up here, which they all do a few things. We will um, really worry about this one where we are creating tables, we are creating um, queries, forms, and reports. And we'll also worry about our relationships, which can be found there. So anyways, if we just look at the schema, okay, we are going to start with our customer table and We'll see if we can put that all together using our data dictionary as well. So, the first thing we need to do is get into design view and call this our customer table. So our first field, which is going to be our primary key, which you can see that there's a key there, is our customer ID. Now the data type would be text and the description would be unique identifier of each customer in this database and our example would be CUS001. Okay so now we need to put that into our little you know options down here. So remember the field size would be six, the input mask would be CUS okay and we need to have um, the quotation marks so that CUS appears when we change views and to represent a number of um, numbers or whatever, we are going to use the hash um, key, which is uh, if you press shift three, it will give you that. So we don't have to change anything else down there, so everything is fine. So we move on to customer name, again text, and customer's name is there, so example would be John. For the field size, we'll just make it up and we, what do we say in our data dictionary? We said that the field size would be 30. Okay, no input mask, no format. Next one is the customer's address. Again, text. So again, 30, no format, nothing else. Okay, customer's phone number. Now we said we'll leave that to text, okay. So we have our um, example in there. We said it was 13, the input mask would be hash hash, then hash 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 hash, dash hash 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 hash. Okay, and that's basically it. All right, our primary key is set, right, which is the customer ID. That's fine, everything else looks okay. So we can right click, click save. Then we need to go to create. We are going to new, to another table. Now this is going to be our item table. Now our item table will contain you know, a few fields, um, starting off with the item ID. So we're just gonna fill that in. So item ID, we'll keep it as text, and we'll put our description. Okay, so again, field size is six, the input mask, okay, ITM, and then hash, 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 okay. Then we have item name. So okay, so we can just you know simplify that. That was thirty. Okay, like we had here. Then item cost. Now, we said we're going to change it to currency and 
we said it will be a maximum of three figures. Now, when you change the currency, you can set how many decimal places you want. So we said that we want two decimal places. Um, you don't really have to set an input mask. Um, there's no real space to, to put in, um, you know, how we had uh, seven, the field size of seven. Um, with the currency, if you just leave it like that, it should be fine. Uh, we also have the item type. Now the item type is either going to be computing or stationary. So item type, again, short text. Okay, so computing or stationary. Now, we said that we'll just round that off to about 30. Okay. Now, to create a drop-down box, what we need to do is we need to go into lookup. We need to change the display control from text box to list box. We need to change the row source type from table query to value list. And then where the row source is, we need to put down computing and stationary. Now, in between each of the options, you need to have a semicolon. Now, the semicolon will mean that you know um, the options are, are different and they're, they're kept separate. Now, if I save that, and actually if I test it, if I go to my data sheet view, I can see here that that works fine. I have both those options. And you can see in for item cost, it already has the, um, the two decimal points. But anyways, um, we'll quickly move on. We'll go to the invoice table. Now, if I create the invoice table, click OK. The invoice table will contain the invoice ID, the date of purchase, as well as the customer ID and item ID. Now these two become very important, but we'll get to that in a second. So, invoice ID. Now, with all of these IDs, look, um, it's probably not the best practice to label everything, you know, INV01, because when you get to this linking table, it, it all looks like it's, you know, all jumbled up, and but it, it will work, and it's good enough, so you know, I reckon you should use it. So we have also a date of purchase. Date of purchase was date time. Okay, our format, I remember our format was the short date. And our description for date of purchase is, it's gonna copy and paste it. So I'm just gonna put in, Okay, so now we have our foreign keys. So this would be customer ID, all right? And I'm just gonna copy and paste it from here. But all it is is just listed down that it was a foreign key from the other table. Now you have to be careful here because your customer ID in this table needs to be exactly the same as your customer ID in this table. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna copy and paste between tables. So I know that is fine. And we also have item ID. Just gonna copy and paste that. You know, if you've already done the work, you know, you can just copy and paste, it's fine. All right, so I'm just gonna go to the item table. Uh, change views, go on item ID, ITM. Okay. You really need to make sure that these two fields in the invoice table are exactly the same as the fields in your other table. Otherwise, when you relate your, your tables together, you know, it might not work. So anyways, save that, okay? Now we are going to um, link them together. So if we click on database tools, we click on relationships. Okay, now I want all three of those tables in there. Okay, what I need to do now is I need to grab the primary key of the customer table and link it to the foreign key of 
the invoice table and you need to make sure you are enforcing referential integrity which basically means that every record in here will match every record in there click create and then you know there's a problem now this problem only occurs because your other tables are open so you're gonna have to close all of those tables before working on your relationships okay so now if I try it again okay now that is exactly how our schema looked from the beginning when we, we set out to, to create this database and that's basically what you want you want the one-to-many relationship so you want to have one item okay so the name the cost and the type of item to be you know invoiced out by you know multiple people multiple times whatever and so you only want one customer that can do the same thing okay so once you have your relationships done we click save don't need that anymore now we need to fill it up with data okay so when we fill up our tables with data make sure you work on the not the grouping table so in this case our grouping table is the invoice table so we need to worry about the customer table and the item table so just double click on that now this is our data sheet view okay now I'm just going to fill out some entries now because we've already set up the input mask okay all I have to press is 001 okay and it will create the first ID so the customer name if you can't see them you know you can um, always make it a little bit bigger okay there we go all right so customer name let's say John and the customer's phone number So you see how, how easy it is to set up records. I'm only going to do three for now. Okay, so save that. Now I'm going to I'm going to skip the invoice table and I'm going to work on our items table. So item number one we'll say is a, a projector. And the cost is 200. The item type would be uh, computing. there I have a few items I'll save that now I'm going to worry about my um, invoice table so the invoice table when we click that is going to look a little bit funny because it's just going to have all these IDs um, yeah we could put more information in here in terms of more fields that might make it look a little bit um, more organized but you know at the end of the day this will work or it should work and it will give you a proper database so the dates you know you can click this little icon here and say you know on the you know the the 31st of uh, july uh, this is backwards because it's american you, we can say that the customer customer 001 bought item 002 so the next invoice you know which was on um the 30th you can say customer 001 bought item also 003 just be careful that I cannot go past item 004 because I, it doesn't exist if I try to then there's going to be a problem and also here for the customer ID I cannot go past 003 because they don't exist so if you have more um, customers and things in your database then you can you know have a play around with these numbers but we're gonna we're gonna put one more all right, so I'm going to say customer 002 bought item 004 and then you'll keep on going like this okay so I click save on that so 
once you've completed all of that, um, it does say that you need to create 10 entries, but we'll just simplify it and I'll just have those three entries. It does say you need to create a form with uh, graphics and appropriate colors. Now, the forms, the forms you want to create on your tables. So for example, um, I want to create a form about the customer table. What I need to do is I need to click on the customer table. I need to go to create, then I need to go to form.